What's up, everybody? This is Alex from WMD back at you again. This time we're going to be talking about the PDO Mark II. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, just exploring a little bit of phase modulation and phase modulation synthesis or phase displacement synthesis or phase distortion synthesis. It's a lot of syntheses. But what we're going to do is we're just going to make some sounds. And I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing to make those sounds. So real quick, I'm just going to start this bad boy up. So this is my patch. The only two voices that we're hearing right now is this kick drum prototype and the PDO. Um, so the PDO is creating the bass line, the kind of hi-hatty thing, as well as that like two and four snare drum, so that blast of noise. So we can change up some of the parameters here. Maybe change up our uh, envelope. All right, sounds pretty cool, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tear down this entire patch and then we're just gonna bring it back to life. And uh, that way you can see exactly what we're doing. So we're just gonna rip some cables out. Done. So, I've got the Doppler set up here. I'm just going to leave that plugged in so we can introduce some delay later, but don't even worry about that. We're just going to ignore it like it's not even there. All right, so just to explain the PDO really fast. The PDO is one oscillator, and it uses uh, three digital copies and phase modulation synthesis to uh, create some pretty cool harmonic timbres. So, Instead of needing, instead of a filter or something like that, where you just put a saw wave into it and you filter out, we're going to start with sine waves and then we're going to use those sine waves to modulate each other to add harmonics to the signal. So instead of taking away um, harmonics, we're going to create harmonics. This is not additive synthesis by any means, but it's still pretty cool. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the PDO with the TB VCA. So the phase displacement oscillator and the triple bipolar VCA. So the triple bipolar VCA was designed as an expander for the PDO. You can use it as an uh, expander or as a standalone uh, VCA. And then there's also another expander, the QAAF, the quad anti, quad anti aliasing filter. So you've got the PDO, the TBVCA, the QAAF. We've probably got like the LCD, the LSD, the QRS, and the TUV, and the SUX coming pretty soon. But um, right now we're just going to start with the PDO and the TBVCA because that's pretty much all that we really need to worry about. So again, I'm going to bring up this sound. This is kind of our starting place. So if I bring over the switches to jack, this is just saying only pay attention to the modulation on the jack. Nothing that the TBVCA does will affect the PDO. So right now we're listening to output four of the PDO, right? Now, one thing we can do is we can just move the phase around with our hand here, which isn't super interesting. It just kind of makes it sound like we're bringing it in and out of pitch, right? So the cool thing we can do is we can take output three and run it into CV input four. So now we're gonna modulate the phase of four with output number three. And as I turn up that CV amount, we get more and more harmonics. So it sounds just like a filter, right? So we're going to now cascade all these outputs into the next input. So we've got two, check this out. And then we're going to take output one with a giant cable for some reason. And we're going to add even more. So one thing that the PDO does that other options in the uh, phase modulation realm doesn't do, or don't do, is uh, the ability to change your starting um, phase out. So where your phase starts. So we can kind of offset the phases here. And yeah, that's a relatively subtle effect, but it is cool and it does make quite a bit of difference. So we're going to put everything back in the center here. And we're just going to start pulling cables again. All right, so 
One thing you can do is you can just start there and make a really cool timbre, right? Then we can run that into a filter and we can just use that as our starting point with lots of harmonics, really cool timbre, and we can create a subtractive voice out of that. But that's not super interesting as far as synthesis goes. So we're just like, you know, that's just making a cool tone and then filtering it out. So another thing we can do is we can use the TBVCA here to actually... Um, normal those modulations. So all the modulation we just did from out to four, blah, 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 we're going to do with the TBVCA now. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my jacks here, and I'm just going to go to both. And so now I can either use these jacks here, or I can just use the normal modulation. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen to output number three now, which is the output on the TBVCA. So what I've got here is I've got output one, two, and three. If I want to listen to four like we were doing earlier, we'll go out of the PDO. The reason why I like to go out of the um, output number three here is that I have a VCA control at the end, so I don't necessarily need another VCA, and I can save that VCA for something else, like uh, what we're going to do in the future. So bring up the volume here. Now, if I bring this bias up, we're going to hear that same kind of deal, right? So we've got a sine wave coming through. And if I turn up the bias over here and over here, we've got that modulation happening. So what we can do with that, what we can do with that, is we can run an envelope into the CV inputs here. And we can get a pretty cool sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out of the architect and I'm going to go into the gate input on my envelope. And then I'm just going to take that rhythm that we were using earlier and I'm going to plug it into the step input. And now I'm going to just take the second one and put it into the reset input. And uh, we're not doing any pitch modulation of the PDO right now. We're just listening to the bass tone, right? So let's hear what it sounds like when we start changing up the uh, tampers here. Put the CV over here. Or we can just put the CV in here. And now we're basically using it as a VCA for the end of the, end of the uh, chain here. And I can change our tambers. And we can just get a amplitude modulation just on that envelope, right? So that's pretty cool. Let's put it back over here. Turn some of these down here. Alright, and so this is what I would call a standard or simple PDO voice. I've said that in quite a few videos, and uh, I don't explain it every single time. Um, because this is something that we use pretty much all the time now. This technique has become kind of uh, the WMD sound, as well as using the Synchrodyne, you know, this is just a sound that we use all the time. Um, so I'm just gonna explain it real quick. What I've got going on is I've got the envelope out going into the CV input um, for, no for number two. And what that's allowing is uh, the number one oscillator, the first analog oscillator, to modulate the second digital copy. So operator one is modulating Two. And now this CV input is normaled all the way down, so the more I turn up this CV input, the more I'm allowing the resulted signal to modulate the next operator. And then at the end we're kind of using this as a final VCA. One cool thing to note is that we can just throw a dummy cable into the input side, and now if I just take out our take out our guy here. We can use the bias knob to turn up our sound, but this uses, uh, this input is, um, the negative input is basically the other side of a crossfader, so if we put a dummy cable in there, now we get complete silence on the other side. So we can use this guy, make a cool sound. Now I'm going to take the one volt per octave out of the architect and I'm going to plug it into the PDO. And we're going to shape our sound again. So again, this is pretty much that voice I was talking about. We're going to go into the kick drum. And this is pretty much it, right? We could just stop here. 
I do stop there pretty much every time I make a patch. That's one huge patch in my sound and in pretty much every performance I do. I, um, I'll just make that patch for the bass line. Um, so we're just going to take it a little bit further. So, and we're going to do a little bit more experimental modulation and some feedback. So we're going to take our envelope and we're just going to run it into this last CV output or CV input here, right? So we can kind of move around our timbres like we were talking about earlier. But what we're going to do now is we're going to do some feedback. So I'm going to take output two and I'm going to run it in to the CV input of two. Now, as I turn up this CV input, you're going to hear a bunch of noise, right? That's because this output is modulating itself. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to make that rhythmic by plugging that into the DVCA here. The DVCA is super nice. It is a 4 HP dual VCA um, with zero cross detectors. We're not going to be using those this time, but just, just letting you know what it is. So we're going to turn up the bias here, and if I have my CV input up, you're now going to hear that I have control over that. So now I'm just going to run some rhythms into it. So I'm going to take my channel out of 7 here, and this is just hitting uh, 2 and 4, so you can see on the metronome, 2 and 4. And I'm just going to plug that into the CV input here. And I've got a pretty cool sound there. And you know, I decided just to take it a little bit, make it a little bit more... Uh, dynamic we're going to use an envelope so we'll use the ADSR VCA here with a fast attack and then we can do a slow uh, slow decay here cool so there's my snare right and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take another we're going to take three and we're going to run it into CV input three now you'll hear when we turn that up we get some noise as well so we're going to run that into the other side of the DVCA and plug that into the CV input. And then we'll just hit that with some more rhythm. So I'm going to go out of output A to the Metron here, and we're going to plug that into the CV input. And now as we turn up the CV input here, we've got some like hi-hat kind of rhythms, right? And now we can change the biases on the TBVCA to just kind of change up the sounds. But our sounds are, now we're pretty similar to what we had going on uh, at the beginning of the video. Bring in our kick drum. And now we'll just add my favorite effect of all time, a little bit of delay to that bass line. Maybe turn down our snare noise a little bit. All right, so now we'll change up the rhythm. So I'm going to go up to a different variation, and I'm just going to change up the rhythm a little bit, change up some other stuff. We'll go in and we'll change all this stuff too. And then we'll say go. And at the end of the phrase, this is our new pattern. All right, so that's my two voice, that's my two voice dance music patch. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, the PDO is a super versatile module. You can use it for so many different things, and I just wanted to show this kind of experimental way of trying to get more out of one voice. So again, we just had the kick drum and the PDO, and using phase modulation as well as some feedback techniques for the modulation, modulating the uh, operator with itself, we were able to get some really cool uh, rhythmic stuff. Um, as we always say, you can't have enough VCAs. It's really nice to have this extra VCA here to do that rhythmic chopping of the um, of the CV for the modulation. So that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any uh, suggestions on what you guys like would like to see as far as techniques or modules, please put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check us out on Instagram. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.